Nestled at the foot of Asia's tallest peak, Mount Kinabalu, a memorial honours Australian troops. It's quiet and peaceful, a stark contrast to the horrors these men faced before their deaths. There were tears in their eyes when they learned the horrible crime committed. Almost 70 years ago, Japanese Imperial forces brought more than 2,400 Allied prisoners of war to Sandakan to be used as a labour force. In January 1945, the men, already weak from illnesses and malnourishment, were forced to walk 260 kilometres west along rugged jungle tracks on three separate marches. Brutally beaten and starved, more than 800 prisoners died, the rest in camps. Only six Australian diggers survived after they managed to escape. Australia become a great nation today because of the life that lost in defending their country by the Australian men and boys. Here in Kundasang, this memorial was one of the first built to recognise the victims. The Sandakan Death March is considered the single greatest atrocity against Australians in any war. And while none of the men are buried here, it's just as powerful. And it's thanks to one man that this place looks like it does. Become deteriorated so badly, I decided to do something. Reconstruct the site, repair, and it took us about a year. And uh, at first we didn't know that this site is important. We just know that it's a war memorial. But when it's complete, Words got out. People start coming in. Sevi has rebuilt and lovingly tended this memorial back to life, all by hand and out of his own pocket. But he doesn't care about the money. Tourist numbers to the memorial have increased, and it's the reactions from the families that he says makes it worthwhile. They realise it that their loved one did not die in vain. Their loved one died as a hero give themselves for their country. Mm. And when they walk out of here, they walk tall, mm. they smile, they're very proud of their heritage. So that put a, a smile on me too. <laughs> and because of Sevi, the sacrifice these men made will never be forgotten in Borneo. In Kundasang, Kathleen Bruin, Nine News.